Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to Advanced English Lessons with Harry where we try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language. We can help you to prepare for the proficiency exams that you're taking, for that job interview, help you with your business English, your conversational English, whatever it is, you've come to the right place. And this is an advanced English lesson. It's a 20 co-locations to describe physical appearance, the physical appearance of somebody. As you know, I'm a great supporter and believer in one-to-one -one lessons as a good way to improve your English language. Let me tell you about Preply. Preply is a one-to-one -one learning platform that allows you to communicate your language in a faster way. Preply has thousands of native tutors in Spanish, French, Portuguese, English, German, over 50 different languages. And with over 32,000 tutors to choose from, you can also use their filters to quicken up the process as to how you can select the tutor that is best for you. Self-guided language learning can be challenging to maintain, as we know, and many language learning apps offer a one-size-fits-all approach that may not be effective for everyone. In-person learning, on the other hand, can be both expensive and complicated. Preply connects you with real people, expert tutors who can offer customized guidance and support to help you achieve your language learning goals. Plus, with the convenience of online lessons, you can take classes anytime and anywhere that suits your schedule. With Preply's 100% satisfaction guarantee, they will provide you with a replacement tutor if your first tutor for some reason does not fit your needs. And don't forget to click on the link in the description below to get your 50% reduction in the first lesson you purchase with Preply.com. Thanks Preply for sponsoring this lesson. Okay, so advanced English lesson, 20 collocations to describe physical appearance. So let me give you a bit of a background here. So these are really important if you're going to use them in one of those proficiency exams where you want to just describe a picture. Or indeed, if you're walking down the street and you're a witness to an attempted robbery, when the police arrive and there's no criminal around, they might want to ask you for a description. So these are really important words, collocations that you can use to describe what the robber looked like. Or you could be just simply sitting on the train and you see somebody that you fancy and you're trying to describe them to your friend later so that you can ask them their opinion. Okay, let's get cracking. 20. Number one, cropped hair. Cropped hair is hair that is really, really short. And sometimes it looks as if it wasn't cut by a barber or a hairdresser because the hair is at different lengths, but it's really short and it's cropped, so quite tight. Not completely bald and not shaved, but cropped. So there is hair sticking up, but it looks like grass on a, on a lawn after you've gone over with the, the lawnmower. So cropped hair. Number two, disheveled hair. Disheveled means messy all over the place. So if you've been running around playing football with your friends, you've been jumping, and then when you stop, you're bit sweaty and the hair is everywhere. It's down your, across your eyes, hanging down over your shoulders. This is what we called disheveled. It looks, as my mother used to say, it looks as if you've been dragged through a hedge backwards. <laughs> so your hair is really, really messy. You really need to get a good brush or comb to get all the knots out of it and make it look a little bit presentable, disheveled. We can also talk about people having a disheveled look in general, not just about the hair, but it could be about their clothes, that their, their, they haven't got their, their, cl their clothes properly attired, they haven't got their shirt up or it's sticking out of their trousers, everything looks just a general mess, so they are disheveled. Number three, coarse hair. Coarse is usually thick and it's not very fine, not e easy to brush. Coarse hair could often be the hair of a dog, yeah? so they could be quite coarse and knotty. But if you're trying to describe a person with coarse hair, it's generally shortish or shoulder length hair, but it's not easy to brush, no real style about it, and quite thick, so coarse hair. Isn't it about time you tried Preply? 
click on the link in the description below to make sure you get your 50% reduction in the first lesson that you purchase with Preply.com. Number four, we talk about receding hair or receding hairline to be specific. And the receding hairline means that the hair is not coming down fully over their forehead or they are showing the early signs of going bald. So it's usually to describe a man's physical appearance that he had a receding hairline. So it's easy to see the top of his hair. There's a parting on the hair on the left or the right but he's not completely bald like me but the hair is beginning to go backwards so there are signs that he's beginning to age so it might give an indication as to the age of the individual so he's got a receding hairline to recede means to go backwards yeah so when the hair is receding it looks as if it's going back over the back of his head okay to have receding hair or receding hairline Number five, when we refer to somebody as ginger head or a redhead, yes, yeah? so or redhead and ginger hair are virtually the same. Lots of people in Ireland have red or ginger hair, yes, yeah? so he's ginger head, very recognizable, very easy to spot, and uh, easy to describe ginger hair or redhead. Now, there is a difference between red hair and ginger, but in lots of situations, they, you, we use the same words to describe them a ginger hair or a ginger headed individual. So he's ginger headed mean his hair is a ginger color. Number six, a sallow complexion. So when somebody has a sallow complexion, it usually means that the natural color white is beginning to go a little brown or yellow, usually be as a sign of some sickness. So when your face loses its color and somebody describes you as having a sallow complexion it usually means slightly yellow or lighter tan color as a sign of some sort of infection or illness or sallow complexion so not so healthy sallow and we often say sallow skin so it's not just the face the complexion is usually refers to the face but sallow skin so if you're you're wearing a t-shirt so the color on your face and your arms may be exactly the same sallow complexion or sallow skinned and as always, if you've liked this particular lesson, then please like the video. And if you can, subscribe to our channel because it really, really helps. Number seven is a fair complexion. So when somebody has a fair complexion, there's no relevance to their how healthy they are. Fair complexion just means the hair is a lighter color. So, you know, if, if somebody's hair is dark or somebody's is a mousy color or blonde, fair is somewhere in the middle, a fair complexion. So perhaps his skin is a little lighter than others or the color of his hair is not black but it's not blonde it's somewhere in the middle he has a fair complexion number eight refers to face a haggard face looks like a face that has been lived in for a long time haggard means looking old probably with lots of wrinkles lots of creases on the forehead on the cheeks on the chin so when somebody has a haggard face it might mean that they look old before the time typically because they're under a lot of stress. Yeah, some people age as a result of stress. They begin to look older than they actually are. So a haggard face means somebody who's suffering from some stress. Perhaps they're just excessively tired and they've got bags under their eyes or wrinkles on their face and might have to do with some lack of sleep. So a haggard face. A pointed face is all about the shape of the face. Pointed, not just a big point sitting on the top of your head, but you know from the shape of the, the chin uh, or the, the not completely round face, we could describe it as a pointed face. It's just another way to, to try and describe somebody a little different than the average person, a pointed face. Somebody can also have a pudgy face. Now the next two, number 10 and number 11, we've got a pudgy face and a chubby face or chubby cheeks. These are two ways of describing somebody having a, a bit rounder face than normal, particularly kids where maybe they're a little heavier than they should be. Say, oh, he's a pretty child. He's got a real pudgy face or a real chubby cheeks. Yeah. So when somebody's got chubby cheeks, they 
certainly like eating their food and maybe their face and their cheeks are nice rosy red so they've got a chubby face because they they like their food or perhaps they're just a little bit of overweight and as they grow up and they start running around they will lose that chubby complexion they will use that lose that chubbiness or that pudgy face that they have so pudgy and chubby cheeks and face really mean the same thing so on to number 12 and we're talking about the eyebrows those above the eyes when somebody has bushy eyebrows bushy means very big and very expansive so like a little bush you'd see in the garden so they need a, a trim bushy eyebrows so you'd be e able to describe yeah he had gray bushy eyebrows so you can describe the color of his hair and the fact that they weren't just like a little thin line of a pencil that you often see in the fashion industry but these were big bushy eyebrows usually means that they haven't been in any way trimmed or cut or shaped so bushy eyebrows usually worn by older people who don't really pay much attention to the hair on that, their eyebrows so they become bushy uh, with age and they, they don't trim them. Number 13, somebody has hollow eyes. When somebody has hollow eyes, it almost looks like the eyes are way back in their head. Maybe they have dark circles around their eyes which accompany these hollow eyes. It's often a sign that somebody is underweight they maybe are not fed properly or they're in in need of some really really good food over a long period of time maybe they've been living in a country where water and food is not so easy accessible so when you take a look at them you've got this hollow eye expression where their eyes are deep and deeply set in the back of their head so hollow eyes number 14 sunken eyes very similar so hollow eyes and sunken eyes again very similar the way they look in perhaps in need of a really really good meal or two and we also can have sunken cheeks on our face which are you know somebody really really thin you can see the outline of the cheekbones on either side and or a bit like that so that you you not not in my face i've got uh, plenty of flesh on my face but when they have sunken cheekbones or uh, sunken cheeks this like that so you can see all of the bones and usually there's somebody who's really thin or has spent a lot of time on diets or perhaps they're just naturally that way okay so sunken eyes or sunken cheekbones and you know the drill by now if you need some extra help some additional uses of these collocations then just write to me as always i'd be very very happy to help you before we mentioned having a pointed face okay but you can also have a pointed nose and this has been very descriptive as to how long the nose is perhaps it it is determined by the nationality of the person so some features are like noses and chins are very specific to certain people from certain countries but if you're trying to describe this person and you are asked whether any noticeable features on their face we say oh well he had a very pointed nose usually means long thin nose yeah a pointed nose number 16 rosebud mouth and lips hmm i had to check this one out because it's not something that i would use but rosebud usually describes the color and some people have naturally red lips others obviously use makeup women in particular where they would apply a lipstick to their lips to give them that glossy look and all sorts of wonderful colors but rosebud and rosebud is a red like the the roses that grow in your garden rosebud mouth and lips a certain shape and a certain color number 17 describes the physical appearance of the body and we're using this expression broad shoulders so somebody who is broad shoulders is, is really big here right? so they've got broad shoulders and you can see when you look at them that they've either worked out well in the gym or they're naturally fit or they play some really good contact sports that requires a good frame a big frame and quite muscular so yeah if you're describing somebody about his height yes he was one meter 80 or one meter 82 with very broad shoulders so a big guy and when you looked at him you could see that he was physically well formed well shaped so with broad shoulders 
Number 18, we've got spindly legs. Okay, so if you've broad shoulders, you've got probably very strong legs to support a big frame. But if you've got spindly legs, it means really thin. I mean, not just skinny, but really, really thin. Spindly legs like a spider or spindly legs like a bird. So something that wouldn't almost support your body when you're out walking. Wow, you can see how thin her legs are. They're real spindly legs, like pieces of string. Spindly, so it means really, really thin. Number 19, big brawny arms. Big brawny arms means really strong, big biceps. Brawn means plenty of strength. Somebody perhaps who is working physically every day using their arms and their hands. Perhaps they are a builder in the construction industry. Perhaps they are a farm worker used to lifting heavy materials. So they get big muscles, big brawny arms. Okay, so it's to a sign of strength. And you know the way people who have good muscles, they like to wear short, tight t-shirts so you can see those muscles or the guns as they like to call them. Big brawny arms. And the last one, number 20, flabby arms. You can also call flabby thighs, okay? Just have to be very careful here not to get too personal with anybody. But flabby arms is when you hold up your arm and there's a lot of loose skin hanging under the arm that really isn't tight. So a sign that there's not much muscle shape there, okay? So these, uh, as we call them, wings, that's just flaps of skin that hang under the arm like the wings of an aeroplane. So these would be flabby arms and the same would appear around the thighs where somebody hasn't perhaps done a lot of workout or a lot of exercise recently. You know, it doesn't take much to trim up, it doesn't take much to keep that skin tight and those muscles firm. But if you don't do it, then you end up with flabby arms flabby thighs, and you've got to put a lot of work in to reduce that amount of flab. So flab means something loose, something hanging under the arm or at the top of the thighs. Okay, so these are flabby arms. Okay, so there are 20 particular collocations to describe somebody's physical appearance. And I said you could use these to create a picture for somebody, particularly if the policeman was asking you for a, a description of the person, then you could describe the person as, oh, yeah, he was a big guy, about 180, very square, very big man. He had broad shoulders. He had short, cropped hair, a sallow complexion, a pointed nose, and uh, he was really, really fit. Yeah, So you could describe the person that way. Or the opposite, you could say, well, very small, petite person, about 1 meter 60, 1 meter 65. I noticed really spindly legs, very thin. They had a sallow complexion and uh, sunken eyes, and the hair was disheveled. Yeah? So there's a good description of how you would describe that person to a police officer. Okay, so it's all about collocations, putting words together that are helpful for you when you want to make some good descriptions. In relation to that, make sure you join us for the next lesson. This is Harry saying goodbye for now. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.